Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. The Guardian Mirror is an interesting thing to tackle. Um, some people would probably tell you that it comes down to getting high rolled, who draws, rouse the ancients first, things like that. I don't think that's very true. I think that there are definitely like turns that put you on the front foot and give you a tempo advantage, but in my opinion, the Guardian Mirror is all about the grind. It's all about the grind and outplaying your opponent. I think the person that wins the Guardian Mirror more often than not is the person who skill gaps somebody. Skill gapping isn't always the case, but I picked out today's video because I feel like this highlights a very good Bravo matchup and what it should look like. My opponent and I had a ton of back and forth. There was a lot of swings and there was a lot of very good plays from both sides in my opinion and it was just a grind fest that came down to the end of the game and it was just a super tight close game i appreciate you guys stopping by and hope you enjoy the video guys and just try it like i don't i don't know this would have been an insanely good hand to dominate on turn zero like we would have pushed through quite a bit of damage here um, if I'm able to, I'm going to like try to block nine and keep my Rouse the Ancients here. Rouse the Ancients is like a very, very strong card that allows me to have a lot of value early in the game. Rouse puts them on the back foot early and gives us tempo. Um, we're going to block like that, keep the Cranial Crush. I know that there's a lot of blues in our deck, but... And, cri and Crippling Crush is like a very like powerful card. But I would rather have the consistency of being able to turn on attacks and make things happen. So I can play Rouse the Ancients, Reveal, Choke Slam, Zealous Belting, and then not do anything. I can dominate a Choke Slam. I can go Zealous Belting. I can make a Surge, Zealous Belting into Hammer, Arsenal, my Choke Slam. Doesn't seem like a bad option. Um, I guess we're setting up for like a late game. Setting up for like a second cycle. Um, Rouse the Ancients if the game goes that way. If the game plays out that way. They all, they've all they also already pitch stacked a Crippling Crush with a blue. I need to get back into the habit of like pitch stacking and like knowing where my deck's at and like how many cards I have left. That's something that I really got out of the habit of after I stopped trying to fatigue decks playing Oldham. And that's something I really need to keep track of going forward. All right, so I've put two cards back into my deck and it's around the first hand is a Rousey Ancient's hand. My opponent blocks six here. Um, so, block Showtime Chokeslam, just keep life total up in cards, and then I can just activate Tectonic Plating, activate Bravo, throw Chokeslam. I mean, people would probably argue that it's worth to take one here and keep a, and keep a three for six in my arsenal, but... I think I'd rather just keep my life total up. So I've pitched two cards so far. Like th the downfall for you guys of me going back to like keeping track of my pitch stack all the time and what I've done is you guys have to listen to me count how many cards I put back into my deck. Um, but I also I honestly think that's the best way for a player to like learn to do it. It's like the easiest way like in, a, in an IRL game, is to say, I've put 24 cards back into my deck, or, you know, 16 or whatever it is, and you count your deck, and you're like, okay, I got 12 cards until I get back to my pitch stack. And I know my first hand is a Rousey Ancient's hand, and I know my second hand is a Dominate Crippling Crush hand, like, you know, like Command Conquer Pummel, and so on and so on. And when you get into the habit of doing that, you make yourself a better player, because over the course of time, you're just teaching yourself how to do it, and then you start to do it subconsciously. Like, by the end of RTN season, I was pitch stacking Oldham hands without even thinking about it. And, like, I think that's how you see great players like Hayden Dale, Tark Patel. Um, gosh, I can't remember the guy's name that won U.S. Nationals. I can't remember his name right now. Cannot remember his name to save my life right now. 
I want to say Chris or something. I can't remember. I don't know. But like, like all those, you take all those like great players and like they're pitch stacking subconsciously. Like they're not even thinking about it because like they just, they know what's going on. Like they know what's going on with their deck. They know what's going on like with the game. And so they're just, they're living in a world where they don't have to think about it. They're just pitch stacking. And so now I know that my first hand is a hand like my my first pitch deck hand so i went um i went two blue sixes a blue eight and i went arouse the ancients so i know that i have a go again hand this hand is less than optimal for me i honestly want to take five as crazy as that is like i don't I don't know if that's correct or not, but man. So I think they're just starting over. I don't really know what they're going for here. I mean, they're down six points, but they have a go again hand. Seems pretty solid to me. Um, maybe they have two reds in their hand and they weren't calculating correctly. So I'm going to go to 35 here. And then if they pitch two reds to come in with the hammer, I'm going to block with a star struck. And then I'm going to hammer for six and arsenal my pummel. No, so he wants to keep his red. Now he wants to attack with it. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to take five more here and go to 30, which is fine. Because I'm losing some points here to be able to start getting into the habit of swinging my hammer. Which is where I want to be. And plus, choke slams just attack action, so it doesn't matter. So this is cards five and six that I've put back into my deck. I'm going to assume my opponent has a pretty decent hand that they're wanting to throw back at me here. So I've put six cards into my deck. Hmm, this is a good hand. So we're just going to block seven. We're also going to throw an Anothos at them. Um, we're also just going to throw in an Anothos at them, keeping cards in our deck here. So our second hand is three blues and a starstruck. One of our blues is Arouse the Ancients. Um, this is card seven and eight we're putting into our deck. So we're eight cards in. Our first hand is Arouse the Ancients hand, and our second hand is an optional starstruck or Arouse the Ancients hand. However we see fit. Guys, appreciate y'all hanging out with me on a uh, on a Tuesday night, trying to get some ProQuest practice in. Appreciate y'all keeping me company. This is probably just going to be Hammer um, from our opponent here. This hand is like the epitome of terrible. Um, like this is absolutely abysmal. I have like rarely seen hands this bad. Part of me just wants to block with crown, put this on the bottom, and then try to go command and conquer pummel. Hey, what's going on, Nick? What's up, man? Yeah, dude. Uh, let me finish this game and I'll hop in the Discord, brother. And we can play some. If I give crown here and I find a blue, I can go spinal crush pummel. Start playing a little bit of offense, and my third hand will start with a pummel. So now we have a red pummel. So... 
five, six, seven. So we just need to throw this here. And this is pretty suspecting. Like this is this is pretty clearly like we have a pummel that we're gonna throw at our opponent here. Um seems pretty on the nose. Like, and I think our opponent started to block and just go to block nine, and then they realize that this is probably a pummel here. Um, so our third hand. Um, so now we the pummel was our ninth card into our deck. Macho Grande and Cranial Crush is cards 10 and 11. We're going to pitch a staunch response. So our third hand is going to be two blues, a staunch response, and a pummel. Um, not, not a great hand, honestly. Um, not It's like we're not looking at something great in that situation. Okay, so they're currently blocking five. They don't gain a life. We're going to go for the pummel here. Now, they probably are aware that it's coming. Like, I assume this is like a staunch response or an unmovable here. No, this is just a take eight. Interesting. Well, I wouldn't have seen that coming. Like, probably not in a million years, just being honest with you guys. This might be one of the worst hands I've ever seen. I feel like that's like the second time I've said that tonight. And I don't know if that's me being dramatic, which is very possible. If you guys know anything about me, it's that I am I am a little dramatic sometimes. Oh we can set up a zealous belting in our arsenal here. Try to have a bigger turn. Um, so the start of our, we just put our 14th card into our deck, and the start of our fourth hand is a blue one movable. Um, this hand isn't really doing much. We could just take 11 and go to 15, and then keep our two cards and go, and go Zealous Belting Hammer. I mean, I think that's our best bet here. We put 13 cards into our deck. We kept probably the two worst cards, in my opinion. To do what we're looking to do here. But, I mean... So, Starstruck and Fighting Spirit are cards 15, or, uh, 14 and 15. So, our fourth hand is looking like blue and movable, blue Fighting Spirit, and a Starstruck which means we want our next card to be a blue so that we have um, the option to dominate a Starstruck. Now, at the rate the game is going, me talking about pitch stack is merely a formality of me talking about my practice here and making sure that I'm staying in peak form for pitch stack. Um, this game is going very quickly. There's a lot of like, like a lot of aggressive swings that are happening during the course of this game, so... And they give us six. Okay, interesting. And they go to 20. Okay, so they are playing sigils in their deck, which is very interesting. So, 14, 15. Um, this hand is not great. If I was to go... I could go Spinal Crush here, which guarantees two cards or a defense reaction out of their hand. Um, I could pitch Spinal Crush to make a Surge, pitch Showtime to play Hammer, Arsenal, Pummel, and try to set up a Crippling Crush Pummel turn, which is like an extremely strong value play for us. I don't know. This hand doesn't feel great. Um, doesn't really feel like we're... Like how many Command and Conquers have we seen so far? We've seen one, and they had got rid of their crown. So maybe we're supposed to pitch Spinal Crush, and then we're supposed to swing a Nothos with pitching Showtime and Crippling Crush. And then we're supposed to let the start of our fifth hand just be a little rough. Because they've said no blocks here. Like, their hand is obviously going to be good. We're going to go Showtime, then Crippling Crush. And we didn't draw anything that really plays to what we were looking for here. 
Activate Bravo. We're just going to staunch here for 10. Pitching our two attacks. Yeah. We're just going to go staunch for 10 here. Um, take one, join them at 14, and then we'll swing the hammer back at them. And then again, we're just kind of hanging on for a pummel. Um, so that was, we went 17, 18 with the, the spinal or the crippling crush and the, um, spinal crush. And then we just pitched two blues, which is 20 cards. So we've put 20 cards back into our deck. The unmovable is 21. And then we know that our first five hands is Rousey Ancients. And then we have optional Rousey Ancients or Starstruck. Our third hand is, um... It, uh, everything after that's a little bit of a blur. Um, but I know that I pitched in a somewhat strategic way, so... <clears throat> well, this is a spot where one of the 0 for 4s would have been very beneficial for us. Um, and this is also a... Not great spot for us because I think we're just forced to block three and discard Macho Grande Thunderquake, go to 10, and then swing hammer for four. Like, I think this is just our turn. Um, it's unfortunate um, that, our, like, that I used my equipment. I'm not going to say in a poor way because we used our equipment to stop two very relevant things and we used our crown of providence on a turn when we virtually had no turn if we didn't use it um so it worked out very in a very positive light for us really hoping that i can block with a choke slam here um i just put my 22nd card into my deck with that That is not great. Um, <laughs> I would be giving up both of my Command and Conquers. So I can give both my Command and Conquers and then swing the hammer, which is mighty unfortunate, but I think that like we're needing to block and play efficiently at this point. Our life total is low. Um, Command and Conquer Pummel is a very good turn for us and would definitely have put us in the driver's seat because our our opponent's either forced to give us three cards and one piece of equipment or two cards and all of their equipment from here. But again, I, I think we're in a spot where beggars can't be choosers and we have to wait for our big turn. We have played one staunch response and pitched one staunch response from what I can like. Yeah, it's, I know we pitched one earlier. Um, there was a hand where we had two blues, a staunch response, and a um, and a uh, pummel together, which was not great. I think that was our fourth hand that we pitched stack. Um, this is our 23rd card we've put into our deck. We are currently 15 cards away from the top, um, 15 cards away from our pitch stack, and our life total is pretty low, so we're trying to hang on as long as we can here. I really like the quick commands that they have put in the game. Talishar has done a fantastic job at listening to player concerns and updating um, updating the game as needed, um, which has been a very it's 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 just honestly very nice to be a part of be a part of a community and a game that like listens to the players and like takes updates and things that they are suggesting. Um, it, it just it's a very nice feeling, honestly, just as a whole. Would like to be able to dominate a crippling crush, but three, five, six, seven. So I mean, if they have no defense reaction, like this is also a pummel crippling crush turn. But even if they swing with the hammer here, like okay, so if I block with like, there's no reason to block with my equipment here. Blocking with my equipment doesn't stop the crush effect. I could give one card here. I could give two cards and throw hammer for six. Take one. Go to seven. And then I'm just giving them another turn to try and have it. And I guess if they say no blocks. Like if I block with crippling crush warmongers diplomacy. I'm giving myself an opportunity to try and win the game with the pummel. 
I think that's the most, I think that's the correct, like the, the poised decision to make here. It's definitely not the fun decision, but I think it is the correct decision. And if I was playing for like something that was like very important, I think that is the call I would make in this situation to try. I'm trying to, like I've been sitting on this pummel and I'm trying to play patiently here. So my opponent at this point has probably sniffed out that it's like one of, like if they were paying attention to my pitch deck, um, that it's my last launch response or that it is my, um, that, or it's a pummel, um, that, or I'm like sitting on a defense reaction, waiting for them to like take a turn off and activate Bravo. Because if they want to have a big swing turn here, they're going to have to do it sometime in the next, probably like three to four turns. It's definitely going to be this turn. If they're giving me equipment, it's going to be this turn. They're going to try and go for it here, which is unfortunate because this is a pummel and I wanted to be able to push damage through. I mean, I guess I could play the pummel, put them to two, and then hope that their crush effect isn't like backbreaking. Like, I, I, I don't know. I think we just kind of have to go for it here. This is cards twenty four and twenty five I put into my deck. I'm now eight a card. I'm now eight cards away from my pitch deck. <sighs> So if I block three and they have a pummel, I take two and then I take four more. So I'd be going to one, discarding my fighting spirit. And then their hammer would require me to block with Terra Sunder and Macho Grande. Um, or I guess I do have the capability of blocking with Macho Grande and uh, all of my equipment, which does not seem like a good trade-off. I'm going to block with my choke slam here. This puts me to five. How many defense reactions have they played to this point? They've played two sink belows and a blue unmovable. I guess let's just block six. Like, if they have the pummel, it puts us to one here. There's no reason in, like, potentially losing the game um, to go for a Terrace underplay here when any defense reaction like completely foils that plan. That is just a very like bonkers move to make here. Um, this is card 26 back into our deck. So we'll go up to 34, then down to 30, which means not this hand, but the following hand will be pitch stack. Um, even if I lose this game, I'm really hoping to ensure that, um, I'm really hoping to ensure that I that I get to that hand just to ensure that I actually pitch that correctly and then I'm able to count the cards correctly. Um, I have a habit of getting into the point of the game where like I get late into the game and I miscount a card or I do this or I do that and then I end up in a bad situation um, because I'm one card off. And the staunch and the immovable were in my last hand. It's unfortunate. So no pummel here. That like it's impossible for them to have a pummel here. So I give debilitate disable swing hammer for four and then arsenal my staunch response instead and set up to protect myself from a big scary turn here. I think that's our play. Um they don't have to block this if their hand is really good, but the staunch response kind of bails me out from that because that is their last Command and Conquer. Um, I thought I counted correctly. Um, I'm going to go up to 31. This is the 27th card going into my deck. So I should go... I should go up to 31 and then down to 27, which means this is the last hand of non-pitch stack cards. They'll be exactly... it. My, so my first hand should be Rouse the Ancients... And three more blues, I believe, a Cranial Crush, a Debilitate, and something else um, are the cards there. So we have an interesting decision here. Do we use our Staunch? Um, or do I just block with three cards and throw the hammer again? 
Like, I can very easily block with um, Spinal Crush and um, War Mo and both my Warmonger's Diplomacies and then just Swing Hammer and try to take my big turn on the next turn, which will be my Swing Turn. I think that's the correct play. I think we're just supposed to go to three here and play patiently. Um, I, I definitely think that's our move. Um, I've been a lot more patient this game than I was last game, so... I'm going to go up to 28, and then I'm going to go down to 24, and this is the 28th card that I've put into my deck. So the card on the very far left hand of my side, uh, the very, very left hand side of my screen should be my pitch deck, if I have counted correctly. Moment of truth, huh, chat? It's time to see if I still have it. If I have... If, like, my lack of practice of pitch stacking has cost me too many points. Oh, there they go. They just passed. So they must have a defense reaction here. That other going to one. That other hand's insane, and they're just going to one. Okay. Nope, they're going to pitch their unmovable. Oh, so the unmovable was in their arsenal. So they've been sitting on a blue unmovable for a while now. Yep, okay, so I counted exactly correct, which is what I wanted to do there. This is a red choke slam. Man, I'm just not able to do my rouse play, huh? You know what I could do, which is which is a little crazy. So it's a little crazy, but hear me out here. We know that our next hand is gonna be Starstruck um and potential rouse. So if I was to throw seven at this, if I was to like pitch a pitch pitch cranial crush here, throw seven at this, make a surge, and throw hammer, and then arsenal rouse the ancients, I go to two, and then I'm forcing them to make a play here. I mean, technically they have to give me a card, at least one card here. So, and I mean, I could also just block three. Nah, 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 nah. Let's throw the staunch here. Let's throw the staunch here. Glad to know that I can pitch stack a little bit still. It's good to know that it's at least there when I'm focusing and paying attention. The joys of them being at five is that they cannot give me just the legs here. They have to give me two cards. And have they played all three sigils? No, they've only played two. Do they pitch a sigil somewhere? Maybe they're only on two sigils. Maybe they felt like the other two weren't necessary. Rouse. I was like, I can't imagine that's what they actually want to do here. So, if I block Fighting Spirit and all of my equipment, I stay at two, and then it's Rouse into Hammer, which is a really solid turn. Yeah, this is nice because I get to stay at two. Now, I am using all of my equipment to take my swing turn right here. Like, this is, this is definitely my swing turn. So seven go again, which means they give me at least one card. They'll probably give me two. They'll probably give me their whole hand here. Like, I'm hoping that this turn is good enough for me to get their whole hand. Okay, so they're going to go to two and swing hammer for four, which means I can give them one card, and then um, as long as it's the hand that I think it is, Okay, it's not. I was one hand off. It was the third hand. Oh, so they're just going to arsenal. Um, Starstruck for 10 gets three cards out of their hand minimum. 
unless they have a defense reaction. If it's a blue unmovable that they have, it is one card and it, and then they get to keep two cards. I could also just make a surge and throw hammer here and play into the pummel effect. Um, no, I guess we can't make a surge, can we? Let's just throw Starstruck here. It's, it's, it's like just big enough to like get enough cards out of their hand. Like at this point, like we have, okay, so they don't have a defense reaction. So they're going to go to one here, which is awesome. And then our staunch response is like going to be just enough to bail us out if we still find ourselves in a bad situation somehow, which is very convenient. Um, knowing that they had to give me their whole hand, I probably should have kept the pummel. But, I mean, I, I never know if they're actually going to have to give me the pummel or not. I'm just going to pitch um, Fighting Spirit to play the Unmovable. And then I'm just going to come in with Hammer for six. And then we're going to be stuck in this like weird loop of hammering for six until I find something good enough to try and end the game. Because none of us have any equipment, and he's at one and I'm at two. This has been a really clean game. I think this game has been better because I was more focused this game, and I was playing a little bit cleaner than I was the first game. I feel like, I mean, so we had some awkward hands the first game, but I was also playing, like, kind of tough, um, just not playing super well. So if I give... If I give Spinal Crush here and attempt to go to one and then he has a pummel, this goes to a seven. This goes to ten and then my put this staunch response puts me at eleven. And so then I can still throw my hammer for six here. My opponent definitely thought he was gonna get me right there. Or no, this is, it's 10 on 10. I can't count. Lord, I was having a stroke. Thought it put me at 11, but that's with a defense reaction. So I get to make a surge here and then come in with the hammer for six. And now, now, since they have no arsenal, now we're just in this weird loop of hammer, 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 hammer. And I'm currently, I'm going to go up to 22 and then down to 18. So I'm up five cards on the turn cycle while we're doing this hammer, hammer, hammer back and forth, which means eventually I'm just going to run them out of cards. So, and if I was playing in a real tournament, I would honestly, like, if, if, we, if it looked like we were going to run into time, I would expect my opponent to be able to see that um, and keep. Oh, interesting. Go to four. Okay. I mean, that does give them another card to give, like. This is actually kind of neat. I can give the disable and go to one here, and then I can tear asunder hammer. And then, unless they have like a red unmovable in their hand, like. That extra point of life to be able to give right there is probably going to actually end up winning me this game. Because if they block three, yeah, they're just dead. Because they have nothing in their arsenal. I was like, so if they don't have a defense reaction in their hand, they're dead. Around 26 minutes into the video, um, I make a decision to play my staunch response for my arsenal and then arsenal arouse the ancients and try to set up for a bigger turn. I think ultimately this is the turn that won me the game. Now, I know the game goes on for about five more minutes, five to six more minutes after this, and there's a lot more, there's a few more plays and some things that definitely swing out my way. But I think making that conscious decision to arsenal rouse the ancients is what won me the game having go again and having like a 13 point turn at the end of the game when the game is super close is definitely something that will give you advantage in the guardian mirror now i feel like i was also really paying attention to my pitch stack and i feel like i was pitch stacking my hands as well as i basically could have i probably could have done some things better but you hear me counting my pitch stack you hear me talking about what i should be doing like and you see me making these like these smart plays that end up working out now, at the end of the day, it's a card game. I had to get a little lucky, but I firmly believe that I made good decisions, and because of that, I was rewarded and ended up winning the game. If you guys saw something I could have done differently, please hit me up in the comments below. If you guys liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content.
Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.